Sometimes you need to make a section of brick in a Halloween project. But what if it's only a small section and you don't want to buy or make an entire sheet of brick paneling? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the look of brick using joint compound and tape. To get started, I've cut down this piece of underlayment that I'll be using for my base, and I'm going to measure and mark out where I want the bricks and mortar lines on my board. These bricks can be any size, but I'm keeping it to 7 by 2 and a quarter inches for this video. Now that I've marked off my horizontal lines, I'm going to use some pinstriping tape to tape off my mortar joints. I like to do the horizontal lines first to make removing the vertical tape lines we'll apply next easier. I'm using quarter inch tape, but you could use any width that achieves the look you're going for. Once I have the horizontal lines taped off, I'm going to mark off the vertical lines and apply the tape to the surface. I'll use a razor blade to weed out the sections where the tape is overlapping to help create the offset brick pattern. Make sure the tape is stuck to the base before moving on to our next step, applying the joint compound. With a 3 inch joint knife, I'm going to apply an eighth to a quarter inch thick layer of joint compound across the entire piece, making sure to keep it uniform in thickness. I like to smooth out the material as I go to prevent there being drag marks in the final piece. You may find that the joint compound has clumps even after being mixed, so don't be afraid to work it around to help get rid of them. Once I'm happy with the coverage, it's time to pull up our tape to expose the bricks. This step should happen as soon as you're done applying the joint compound so that it's still pliable and any finger marks can be removed. Pull the horizontal lines first, then the vertical lines and repeat all the way up your piece. I like to use a damp sponge to soften the edges and give a bit of texture to the joint compound before it begins to set up. If it's a warm day, you can extend the working time of the joint compound by spraying it with a bit of water. Now that the texturing is done, we'll allow the piece to fully dry. To minimize cracking, Keep it out of direct contact with the sun. Once the bricks have fully dried, it's time to mix up our brick colored paint. I'm using hot saffron, real brown, and engine red from folk art. There's no real ratio for these colors, although you can see the majority is orange, followed by a bit of brown and just a small amount of red. Give your paints a mix, and when you're happy with the color, apply to the entire surface. You can paint over the mortar lines if necessary, They'll get some paint in a future step, so you don't have to be too accurate with this color. Next up, we'll add in some model accent colors with a sponge. I'm using the hot saffron and real brown from before to create some tonal variation like you'd see in real bricks. If you need help blending the accent colors, spray down your brick with a bit more water. I'll set it aside to dry while I mix up a medium gray paint to use for our mortar lines. You can see I'm not being particularly tidy with this application. 
but that's because I'm going to use some of the gray that's bled onto the brick faces to create a haze. Once the mortar lines are filled in, take a damp sponge and blend some of the gray onto the face of the bricks. And when you have good overall coverage, give the entire surface a spray of water and start to drag from the top down in a straight line to create the look of environmental aging. You can pounce the sponge on the bricks to remove any excess paint and then set it aside to dry. Using a brush, sponge, and spray bottle to help move the color around, I'm going to add in some additional discoloration and weathering before highlighting it with a pale green paint. Dabbing paint randomly across the entire surface before hitting it with a bit of water to make the paint spread more naturally. If I find that there are areas where it looks too dark, I'll use a damp sponge to remove or blend the paint. For the highlight, I like to leave a bit of the darker color on the brush and blend it with the lighter color. This helps to keep it from looking too contrasty. This step is where you can let your creativity run wild. There's no right or wrong here. It's more of a look based on how it'll be used. So as always, start off light and build up to your final aging. A last bit of dry brushing to help pop the bricks out a bit more and touch up any mortar lines and we're done. This technique can be used to create a variety of effects and is a good tool for haunters of all kinds. Not only is it good for small sections, but it works just as well for large wall sections or set pieces like fireplaces and mausoleums. That's going to do it for this episode. If you want to see more tutorials like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and hit the notification bell to get an alert when we put out our next one. And until next time, happy haunting. <laughs>